All right, welcome back. Game two of AlphaGo versus the world. Chris Garlock back again with Michael Redmond. Michael, we're just going to jump right into it. We've got uh, 59 games to go, so we better get to it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, this is the second game. Who's our player? The human player is Zhang Ziliang, and excuse my pronunciation of the Chinese names. Um, he's a Wondan pro at the time. He was born in Hunan, China in 2000. So he's 15 years old, 16 years old at the time of this game. Okay. Um, and now in, in 2019, he became a five don. So at the time, I think he was already in the Chinese A League. So he was a pretty good player, um, part of the team there. And he seemed to like territory before AIs came. So I'm, when I talk about these players' styles, I'm generally in this series, I'm going to be talking about their styles before they played AlphaGo, because after okay. AIs came on the scene, everyone changed. Right. And it's one of the things people picked up on. Cool. So we can get All into right. the game now? Absolutely. Let's go for it. Rock and roll. Okay. So in this game, um, AlphaGo has white stones, and both of the players have played star points and three four points. And this is actually pretty good. This is um, There's nothing wrong with the way Black is playing here. And these are actually moves that would still be chosen by computer programs, even now. So Black is playing, uh, so far, there's nothing wrong with Black's game. The first move that sort of goes off the map as far as AIs are concerned is this um, splitting the side move. The Wadiuchi right. is not a move that computers like to play. It's a move like where you would see um, AIs play something like a shoulder hit here. And this is still a move that we have trouble understanding. So. And actually, the score doesn't change very much when Black plays here. It's not as if Black's losing anything. Hmm. And with a six and a half Komi, Black's supposed to have a slight advantage at this point, in, um, in most cases. Like, most computer programs do not um, calculate for the six and a half Komi, but the ones that do, like Katago, seem to think that Black has a slight advantage. And this is where Black played this move. And I, I remember I did not like it at the time. I think I did a commentary on this very game, a very detailed game for AGA. Yeah. Um, this was a very slow move. There's no reason for Black to be playing that move at this time. So I'm going to suggest that if Black had played here, the big point on the left side, just putting pressure on all those white stones in the upper left area um, on a large scale, something like this might follow. And White would have to move those stones out. And this shoulder hit that White has played up there, it's a move that AlphaGo did not really continue to play so much. It would play one shoulder hit, but it did not, did not usually follow up with this, with this jump here on the sixth line. It would usually play elsewhere after playing the, the shoulder hit. So this was a period in AlphaGo's um, development in which it was still playing this style, which... Um, maybe not even the best. So th actually, this this variation gets a pretty good score for Black, something like 52%. Mm. So Black has a winning advantage at this point, if you ask an AI. And it okay. looks perfectly easy to, in this board position, it's a position that would be easy for me to play as a human player, because White's groups here are, Black is putting pressure on these groups on, on a large scale. Black does have potential to attack White here. Uh -huh. So I like that. In the game Black played here, this is going to allow White to control the whole board. And this is going to be a great example of AlphaGo controlling the board when White plays this way. And already, um, not only is it starting to look good for White, but it's really good for Black. It's really difficult for Black to find a good way to follow up here. In the game, wow. Black played like this. And this just suddenly gives White this huge advantage. Like White has something like a 60% winning percentage already. Okay. And the game, Black is just winning by a, a couple of points before Comey. So there, there's no way Black's going to be having, Black's going to have a lot of trouble giving a six and a half point Comey now. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's really hard to find something else for Black to do. So I, I think I asked um, Leela <laughs> <laughs> what course. Leela thought. Leela wants to play an attachment here. And so oh, the no. idea here is that it looks like Black is going to try to get some mileage in the lower right corner before settling Black's group on the okay. lower side. So an example of what might happen here um, is Black um, plays just the one attachment and then cuts here. And if White is playing on this side, if White is playing on this side, then Black has more potential to play strongly on the lower side. 
uh, or if white well, plays yeah. on this side. In this case, black is going to have more potential to uh, later on to um, to break out on this side towards yeah. the right side. So black can continue to um, to protect the lower side group. And if white plays like this, black can just continue to protect that group. And black still has this the advantage of being able to break out here. So that exchange in the corner was really great for black in this case. Otherwise, if white takes in the corner, now black's group on the lower side is perfectly alive. So this group is alive. It means black is free to play elsewhere. So this would keep black, have kept black in the game. It would have been, like I was saying, the moment black plays that extension here, the score did go down a bit, but it's still a playable game. Um, from right. a human viewpoint, um, most players would not feel so bad about this game. Mm -hmm. um, so it all started with the fact that black allowed to, white to play this, but it, after black played this move, which is supposed to be the joseki, this is the joseki, <laughs> it would yeah. be the move that's easy to find. And we're, we have to remember this is a game that's played at a very short time limit, so the, the, the player is under time pressure to start with. It would be extremely difficult to find what seems to be the correct move that Leela is suggesting here. Right, right. So this is the game sequence. It's already looking very bad for black. I'll just go a few more moves, but at this point, like AlphaGo is already thinking the game is won. Um, show you how it developed here. You can see black is still taking territory. It was a very common style at the time. And you can see that white is just controlling the center of the board. And now white- Wow, the submarine. And the submarine, I really liked this. It was fun. And, and white has no trouble handling these stones. Um, in the video that I did at the time and in the book, I will be going into more detail about there's a lot of exciting variations that are going to happen on the upper side. But as far as AlphaGo is concerned, it's already over. Like the game is finished at this point. It's just that <laughs> I would not notice, and I, I bet the human player is not noticing either at this point of the game. That, that I think, is the thing that we're going to see with this particular series and what, what I think is, is really exciting uh, about them is, is that there's a lot more play. Uh, again, we're just focusing on some key, key points, uh, and there is a lot more play in the game. But as you say, Michael, as far as AlphaGo is concerned, uh, it's, it's just, uh, you know, all over but the cry. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> all right, folks, that's going to do it for this game, too. Hope you're enjoying this, and uh, we'll be back soon with, with game three. Thanks again for watching.